Many text editors, Sublime Text included, include a feature called syntax highlighting, which applies semantically defined colors to text in the file to make it easier for you to understand at a glance what the different parts of the file mean. It's a great way to get a better handle on your code. Now, what if you want to change the colors that are used for something like this? Well, keep watching, because today, that's what we're going to be talking about. <music> Hello fellow Sublime Text Fanatics, Odan here, and welcome to this week's video where we are once again answering your questions. This time it's a question about color schemes and how to modify them. This particular question comes from Cylon Scion, who is using Sublime Text 4 and the Mariana color scheme. I would like to know how you go about changing the color of something. In this particular example, changing the color of the import keyword to be something else. This is indeed something that you can do, although as we're going to see in just a moment, possibly depending on what it is that you want to change, it may not work without extra to work, but we will, of course, get into that. But before we do, uh, I'd like to point out that Cylon Scion is one of many people who hangs out with me at Twitch over at twitch.tv slash odatnerd, where I do weekly streams on Wednesday and Friday doing all sorts of development work in Sublime Text in a real world type environment. If you ever want to stop, chat, hang out, say hi, ask a question and get a live answer, that is a great opportunity to do something like that. We also do the exact same thing right here on this channel every Monday as well in Sublime Text Live. Both of those are linked down in the description below this video. And there are some other handy links down there as well because we've talked previously on the channel about color schemes. There's a whole video series that the playlist is linked down below if you'd like more information on the structure of color schemes, how they work, all the options you have available to you. And in order to edit color schemes, you do need to know a little bit about scopes and scope selectors. And we're going to be touching on that very briefly today, but nothing in depth. We're going to assume you understand that. So if you don't, you may want to pause this video, jump down into the description, watch the video on scopes and scope selectors so that you understand what we're doing, and then pop back to here. And in that video, I used a plugin to demonstrate how scopes match. And we're going to be using that exact same plugin right here in this video today. If you'd like to follow along and use the exact same thing that we're doing here, then you can install this as well. And to do that, you need to take a couple of extra steps because this isn't officially released to package control, at least not at the time that I'm recording this. But it's very easy to do. All you have to do is use the package control add repository command that you're going to find in the command palette down at the bottom of the window. A little panel will open, paste in this URL here. Don't worry, this is linked down in the description. You don't need to try to transcribe this. Hit enter and... That's all the setup that's required. All you have to do now is use the install package command from package control, choose scope view, and the package will be installed and we are good to go and continue on with what we're going to be talking about this week. And that is, of course, how do we modify a color scheme? Well, before we get there, let's talk about a couple of things very quickly, and that is syntax definitions and color schemes. Syntax definitions are something that is applied by Sublime on a file by file basis, depending on the type of that file. And it quite literally contains a list of rules and instructions on how to analyze the content of any particular file to recognize what parts of it are special, what parts a function name or a string or a reserved word or the name of a tag, if it happens to be something that is in HTML or the name of a property, if it's CSS, etc. The color scheme, on the other hand, also contains a list of rules, but here it's rules that say things that are a particular type of thing, like a reserved word or a tag. This is the style that is applied to something like that. This is why we need to know about scopes and scope selectors, because the syntax definition is applying scopes to things based on what they are in the file, and the scope selectors are being used to match those scopes. Now, if that doesn't make any sense, there is a video that's linked down in the description, and also we're going to see an example of it in just a moment. Say, for example, using this Python file. Now, the answer to the question that we want to have here is, how do we make the import statement be a different color? And we can see right when we look at this that there's, there's special stuff happening here, because on the first couple of lines, the word import is a different color. It's, it's red. But the word import further on down the file isn't that color. And that's because that is part of a string instead. So the rules here know that this word import means something special in some places, but not in others. And the syntax highlighting relies on those rules that are applied in order to know what color things should ultimately be. Now, this is an important distinction, so let's pause and think about this for a second. The syntax definition analyzes the content of the file and applies specific scopes to different aspects of it based on the structure of that file. And the color scheme uses those scopes to know how to change the color of things. So there's a couple of key points to make here. 
The first is that if you'd like to change the color of something, then you need to know what scope is applied to it so that you can create a rule that will color that particular scope and change the color of things. The second thing, which might not be immediately obvious, is that if the syntax definition doesn't apply something unique to that particular piece of text that you'd like to change the color of, then you can't change the color of it, perhaps in the way that you might want. In our example here, the import statement is a keyword. It's a very distinct thing. That is something that we can change the color of, as we'll see in just a moment. On the other hand, the names of functions inside of a particular file, if we're dealing with code, well, functions themselves are recognized as a syntax construct. This is the definition of a function. This is a function call. Those are things you can apply colors to. Being able to have two different functions and have one of them be a different color based on its name, depending on the type of file you're editing, that may not be possible because the syntax definition doesn't necessarily know or care about different names of functions. It just recognizes functions. So that's one of the reasons why you may not be able to color exactly everything you want, at least not without changing the syntax definition of the underlying uh, type of file to provide that sort of information. But that's sort of beyond the scope of what we're dealing with here. That's, that's kind of a bad pun. But bad puns notwithstanding, how do we actually answer the question? How do we make the import keyword in this particular case change color? Well, to do that, we need to add a rule to the color scheme that knows how to color the text of a particular scope. What scope do we actually need to use in order to target this particular keyword in the file? Well, for that, we're going to use a tool that's built into Sublime called Tools Developer Show Scope Name. You can find that in the menu. There's a key binding associated with it, which is what I'm going to be using here. All you have to do is put the cursor inside of the word or syntax item that you'd like to know more information about, hit the key or trigger the menu item, and this pop-up will appear giving you all kinds of information. Now, the bottom half of this is not really of any concern for us for what we're doing here. This is more for people that are working with syntax is it actually shows you a trace of how the syntax definition got to the point where it decided what this actually is. The top part, the list of scopes, that's what we're interested in here. Now, there's a lot of scope information that's available in the pop-up, and knowing what part of it you care about and what part you don't, that's one of the things that you get more of a sense and a feel of the more you go through the process that we're going to be dealing with in just a moment. Uh, you can always ask questions about this if you're uh, in any way unfamiliar with it, but my best advice would be to play around with it and see what effects things have. That's the best way to learn what exactly is going on. We could also use a package similar to the scope view package that we're going to be using in just a second to try to visualize what it is that we're actually trying to do here. Now for us, this pop-up at this particular point contains three lines. Let's go over those. The first one, source.python, that's an indication that this is a source file and in particular a source file of type python. That's not super specific, that's going to apply to anything anywhere inside of a Python file. So for the purposes of a color scheme that wants to change a particular thing, probably not what we care about. The second line is what we refer to as a metascope. This is a scope that's providing structural information about this particular type of file. In this particular case, it's telling us that this is an import statement. So if we wanted to do something specifically inside of an import statement, this might be some useful information. However, the third line here, that looks more like what we want. This says that the word under the cursor is a keyword. And then it goes on to specify more specific information about this, that it's a control keyword, and that specifically it's an import control keyword in a Python file. That sounds more like what we actually want to see here. So if we were to use the package that we installed earlier, scope view, we can do some tests and see exactly what this means for us. If we use the view scopes command, we can enter, let's show us all of the scopes that are type keyword just keyword. And it finds and highlights them all, and there are a lot of them. We certainly hit the thing that we wanted, but there's a lot of other things in here too. So using just keyword here would affect all of these elements. That's not what we want. But we can add more specificity because we got that information from the scope pop-up. So we can modify this to say, for example, keyword.control. And now we're, we're dialing it in a little bit. Some of them went away. The, the def that defines the function is no longer highlighted, but there's still too much stuff here. But 
if we were to change this and go in one more time and change it to keyword.control.import, now we've narrowed in on a scope that will conclusively tell us exactly what it is that we want to color. Now as an aside, if you happen to be using some other programming language that also has a keyword for importing but you only wanted to change it in a certain type of file, the information to do that is here. We could add the .python to the end of this scope or we could start it off by saying source.python and then follow it up with the keyword scope here. Either one of those would make sure that this only matches it in a particular type of file, but we're not going to worry about that here. Again, we're going to break in here to point out that this is a very important thing. The quality of the scope information that you see when you do something like this depends entirely on the syntax definition. So if your syntax definition is very simplistic or not very good, then you may not have the granularity of information that you need being applied by it in order to color things the way that you want. This is another reason why you may want to change the color of something, but it may not be immediately possible. If the syntax definition doesn't have the right information, there's just no way to uniquely target the thing that you want to change the color of. But here we do have that information, so how do we actually apply it? Well, we're going to need to create a customization for the color scheme. This is incredibly easy. If you're using Sublime Text 4, just use the UI Customize Color Scheme command that you'll find in the command palette. If you're not using Sublime Text 4, then you can install the package dev package, which we've talked about previously on the channel, and I generally recommend. There's a video on that linked down in the description as well. It provides a similar command in the command palette as well. Choosing it will open up a split window that shows you the default color scheme values on the left and your customizations on the right, exactly the same way as you might expect if you were editing preferences or key bindings. And this works the exact same way. In use, the color scheme information used by Sublime is a combination of the defaults on the left and what parts of it you change on the right. So all you have to do is add augmentations or changes into the right hand side, leave everything else alone, the default will be applied and everything will work exactly the way you like. And then if the default color scheme changes in some fashion, you still get the those changes while applying your modifications. All we have to do is jump over here and inside of the rules section we're going to add a new rule. There's a couple of things we need to put in here. One of those is the scope to which this rule applies and we already know what that is. That's the keyword scope that we saw just a moment ago with the full qualify qualification to make sure that it covers exactly the thing that we want. With that in place, this rule will apply to that particular text. We could do a few different things here. We can apply a different foreground color than the default, a different background color than the default. We can apply different font styles, such as bold, italic, underline, or if you're using Sublime Text 4, glow, or any combination of those that you might like. Uh, there's more details and information about this in the color scheme documentation that's linked down in the description and we also talk about it in the playlist that's down there as well. So in this particular case, let's say that we add a new foreground color and we'll change this to Dodger Blue. And we'll also, because it's a fun thing to do, add a new font style of Glow. And all you have to do is save this and as soon as you do, we switch back to the other file, those colors are now a glowing blue color for the import statement instead of the color that they were before, but everything else remains exactly the same. And of course, you could continue on tweaking and iterating and changing any colors you might like with this. There's also a little bit of an inheritance system as well, because you can modify, for example, glow only on certain keywords, but leave other keywords alone. That's all covered in the videos that we've did linked down in the description below. If you'd like some more information on that, because this one's getting long enough as it is. I hope you found this useful and helpful. If you have any questions whatsoever, do not hesitate to let me down down in the comments on Twitter in one of the live streams. I will be glad to help you get this sorted out. And until one of those situations or the next video, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.